If he has my driving record, Your Honor, he has exculpatory evidence, and this is malicious prosecution. Well, I have to take this matter under advisement. <laughs> Two weeks later, she let it stand. And I went and got a new license and did my two years and paid my fine. That's a learning experience. Okay? And now I'm a little bit smarter. Not a lot, a little bit. Because I learned a little bit more and when in, in just a couple minutes when I finish this part, Brandy will come up and, and we're going to start applying this thing and and then showing you within the UCC how to take this to the courtroom and start applying some of the things that we're going to be talking about in how to set this up and how to do things. So um, I just I don't want anybody to get the idea that that this is a fun really fun thing to do because it's really scary. Okay? I mean you're sitting up there and there's a guy up there that, that holds your life. And he has a lot of power and he thinks he's God. And in his courtroom he is God. And don't make any mistake about that. Okay? I mean, we can look back at this and laugh, but this was not a fun experience. I mean, I was pretty calm about it, went through it, had my wits about me, wasn't shaken like a leaf or any of that, I thought, well, this will be interesting. Never done this before. And that's the way that I try and approach it. When I went to grand jury and federal court, same type of situation. I mean, they're trying to hook me up still today. And, th and that's okay. I, I bought into that when I started down this road. Okay? I mean, that's just one of the one of the hazards. If you're gonna if you're gonna poke at the grizzly, he's gonna turn around and take a swat at you. You just try and stay out of the way of his teeth. Okay? And some of us have had a little more success than others at doing that, but I'm sure that our time will come. Collateralizing America with Sam Davis, part four. The Ada County Justice Court in and for the state of California will now come into session. The Honorable I am Cutthroat presiding. <laughs> <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Let all who have reason to grieve be heard and come forward. Be seated. Court's now in session. This will be the state of Idaho versus Samuel Davis. Are you Samuel Davis? Uh, your Honor, uh, my name is Samuel Davis. Uh, and for the record, Your Honor, I'm here under threat, duress, and coercion. And uh, I'm only crossing the bar under protest. Mr. Davis, sit down over here and, and be quiet, will you please? Mr. Davis, you're charged with a violation of Idaho Code uh, Title Section 49301, failure to purchase a driver's license, and 49324, failure to carry registration and insurance papers. Do you understand the charges as I've read them to you? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I, I don't understand those charges. Mr. Davis, do you understand the English language? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I did quite well in high school, and, and uh, I understand English quite well. Well, very well, Mr. Davis. Exactly uh, what is it about these charges that you do not understand? Well, Your Honor, I'm having a little struggle with the uh, nature and the cause of this action in front of me. What do you mean by the uh, nature and cause of the action? Well, Your Honor, I need to know before I can proceed if, if this is a civil action or a criminal action. Well, let me see. Um... This is a violation of uh, Idaho Code. This is a criminal violation. And, and would that be a judicial determination, Your Honor? Uh, yes, it is. This is a crime. This is a crime. So, Your Honor, 
having ruled that this is a, a criminal action uh, and pursuant to the Constitution of the State of Idaho, Your Honor, in Article 5, Section 1, um, could I ask, would this, would this action be prosecuted in the name of the people of the state? Mr. Davis, I'll not answer that question. Mr. Prosecutor, uh, would you uh, like to answer Mrs. Mr. Davis's question? Uh, no, Your Honor, I want absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with that question. <laughs> Mr. Davis, if you mention your constitutional rights one more time, in my courtroom, I'll have you thrown in jail for contempt of the court. Do you understand that? Uh, well, I really don't understand how I can not have any constitutional rights, Your Honor, but uh, not wanting to go to jail, I guess I'll understand that. Well, we're going to move on here, and I want you to go back and sit down. We're going to continue your case while we dispose of some other cases before this court, so as not to impose on the time of the other people before this court today. Thank you, Mr. Davis. You may be seated. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, I went back and sat down, and two and a half hours later, we went through this same routine again. That is almost verbatim of what happened. Okay? Now, when I asked for the nature and the cause, again, I was trying to determine civil action versus criminal action, and I was, I was, um, putting forth my constitutional rights, okay, my constitutional rights to know the nature and the cause of the action, okay, and that's when she said to me, if you mention your constitutional rights one more time in my courtroom, you're going to jail for contempt of court. Now, how would you like to grow up like I grew up, and I'm sure you grew up, and go into a courtroom setting and a judge say, if you mention your constitutional rights one more time in my courtroom, I'm going to put you in jail for contempt. That was a little disconcerting to me. Now, when the prosecutor refused and said, I don't want anything to do with that question, okay, I didn't know what to do. I was at that moment in time out of knowledge and understanding. Okay? And so I had to wing it from there. And I winged my way right into the cell. <laughs> okay? And it was, it, 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 took, it took several months to go through this process. That was just arraignment. Then we went to pretrial and we, they tried to make a deal with me. And, and the end result was jail. But I want you to understand that that judge sitting on that bench acts just like that. I mean, th that was a pretty good job. Now, the next case that we did, we're going to do, is a case that happened back in November here in Des Moines uh, with a client that we were helping. And we had put in, he had already done one acceptance for value with somebody somewhere, somehow, uh, and then uh, he got in with some other people that did a habeas corpus. And then uh, somehow or another, uh, a friend of mine in Texas got a hold of me, and, and we went from there. And I came up here uh, three or four days before these folks had another hearing. They were waiting to be extradited back to Texas. And uh, the fellow's name was Travis, and, and he had a driving while suspended from a year ago here in Washington, and he was going to have a hearing. We had done an affidavit of specific negative averment, and we said, you do not exist. Okay? We said that to the court, and with that affidavit, um, we had put that affidavit in just before... Travis is hearing. Now, I'm going to take this microphone because he's going to come over the bench at me. And I'm going to get over here just a little bit. That way when he spits and sputters, he won't get it on me. 